my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to work on a few different projects and they are just all over the place. So let's get started and I'll explain it to you. I got a couple of these, actually I got three, but I'm going to work on two with you guys today. Uh, these little magnetic tin uh, frames from Dollar Tree. I had my friend Tracy send me a few of these because I can't find them in my store. And then I have this stencil that I found in my stash that I hadn't even used yet. So, of course, I had to get some paint on it. So, uh, and I think that one was from Hobby Lobby, I believe. It's the uh, feed, fresh feed uh, stencils with one with a cow and one with a chicken. So I'm using some plaster paint. You could use whatever color you want if you want to copy this project and I just covered it all over. I did two coats on that. Then I'm taking my Jamie Ray Vintage uh, stencils that uh, they're the grain sack stencils. This one is the three lines, uh, same size lines in a row um, and I'm doing a gray color from Folk Art all the way down on both of them. I'm sanding uh, it down just a little bit. I wish I'd done it a little bit more but uh, I only did this a little bit so and I didn't realize that I should have probably done it more until I got my next my stencil on top of that but there you go farm fresh with the chicken on it and the other one has the cow on it and I just dried it a little bit and then I went ahead and sanded and distressed uh, actually the whole thing here I'm showing you that I'm doing it on the frame but then I go there we go then I go over the picture and I'm dulling that up just a little bit making it look a little more distressed and worn and instead of wiping it I blow it off so that that black doesn't spread around too much and then I'm taking a little black that was on my paintbrush and I'm going over the edges of the frame to darken them up just a little bit so these don't have a hanger on them at all, so I got my drill out and I'm going to drill a couple holes in the top and decided to get my mechanics wire. Now I got this roll from, mm, I believe I got it from Tractor Supply. It's over across from all the, the animal feed and it's very inexpensive and it's a nice great big roll so it lasts quite a while. Um, I'll try to put a link down in the description for you uh, so if you're interested you can purchase it. So I just did use my pen and I wrapped the wire around it. It's very pliable so it's uh, not too hard to maneuver and I just wrapped it around a few times and then pushed it up against the frame to get it to sit flat and then put it through the other side. I did a little twist up near the top uh, where it would hang just for interest and I also wanted to put a little bow on it so there we go with that. And then before I sealed it, I took it outside and used a black uh, spray paint and I held it back a ways and I just kind of sprayed little spots all over the background so that it was uh, had a little bit of dimension to it. So you can see here in these pictures. project I got this cool wooden tray it's totally uh, not stained or painted and I was just in love with it when I saw it I got it at the Lancaster New Hampshire Fairgrounds they were having a yard sale and my daughter and I went and I found this for two dollars so I was pretty excited so I'm just taking some black paint and I'm gonna go around the edge all the way around uh, and try and keep a nice edge on that and make it all black. Now I'm taking my special sta dark stain. This is antique wax, water, and black, a little bit of black paint mixed together and it makes a nice dark paint or a nice dark stain and uh, I just brush it on and then wipe it off and it comes out so nice. I really love the color of this. It's such a rich uh, warm tone to the wood and you can still see the wood through it 
but the black paint still leaves spots on there so it's kind of like highlighted. So now I'm just taking sandpaper and sanding down the edges to of course make it distressed and make it look aged. I have this really cool crow stencil, mesh stencil that I had my friend Tracy and Dan, uh, her husband Dan, um, make up for me. This was part of the uh, other one where I have the seed company and I just love my crow decor so I had to have them make a big one. So this is the first time using this one and as soon as I saw the cutting board or the the tray I decided this needs to do it this needs to be the one that gets the crow now it did leak through just a little bit I'm not too worried about it like you can see here I just took my uh, sandpaper and I just sanded in around the places where it leaked out I think it did that because I did not seal it after I had stained it and it was still maybe a little bit wet or um, I don't know but it, it sanded down fine. Of course, I'm going to sand it and distress it anyways. And then I just go over it again with my, my stain mixture and then wipe it back. It does dry a little bit uh, lighter once it dries, so I'm not too worried about the dark part of it. So now I'm taking another stencil that I had Tracy and Danny make. It was the old... Uh, Crooked River Seed Company with the two crows on it. I hadn't used this one either So I put the old Crooked River on the top and I did not get a video of that. So I'm showing you I'm taping up and using the uh, The backing to get the seed uh, Just the seed part of the stencil on this part and then down underneath I'll show you I'm going to do the company part down underneath that one um, so you can still, even though you have a stencil that's, you know, all set up for you, you can use bits and pieces of those stencils. So it really came out really cool. I love these stencils and how they came out and they do work great. The only reason why it didn't stick well was my fault for not sealing it, which I did go ahead and dry it the rest of the way and then seal it. So now they're coming out great. So here I'm putting the company on and I just put the paint on, just dab a little bit of paint and then I have a wooden tag that I got paint on so I'm just using that as uh, my, my product to help push it through that uh, mesh on the stencil. Now I got a little bit, a couple little bits of black down underneath company, went down too low with my paint and I just took a little bit of wet damp rag and wiped it right off. And now I'm doing the bottom quality seeds since 1883. That stencil just came out so cool. It's going to be a great anytime home decor, but it's going to be really good for Halloween, I think, for those that like to decorate with the crows. So now I'm going down through the top with my drill a little bit bigger because I'm taking my, uh, my jute twine instead of, or sorry, my jute rope instead of my jute twine. And I am just dropping it down through and making a knot so that it will have a place to hang. this little spice cabinet from Goodwill for four dollars. I thought it was really cool looking. I liked the iron rods or metal rods that went through them to hold in you know if it's your spices or whatever you decide to put in there. Uh, I just liked it and it also has a drawer which is really cool and also at the very bottom it has a towel holder so that's pretty nice to hang up uh, in your kitchen or bathroom to hold your towels. So first thing I'm going to do is take off the hardware. I didn't have to do this, 
but it made it easier. I wanted to sand this all down, so it made it easier to sand, not having those sticking out. And I wanted to take the rods out as well, but they were in there uh, really good, to, and I wasn't about to try and do that. But at least the little ball uh, ends on them were gone so that I could go ahead and sand this down a little easier. And that's all I did. I took it outside and just sanded, sanded, sanded. Once the little cabinet was all sanded down, I wiped it all off and then I took my flat black Rust-Oleum spray paint and I'm going to give it a two coats of the black paint. I did one coat, but I wanted to make sure that I got all the spots, so I did one light coat, let it dry, and then I did a second coat to make sure I hit everything right. Then I went back with my sander again and just distressed it. I went all over and around, especially around the edges, and distressed it fairly heavily. And then when the sander wasn't getting in spots I wanted uh, as much, I took and did it by hand with a piece of sandpaper. So now I'm taking my flat sealer and sealing the whole piece. Now I have the drawer and I'm going to put a piece of the ad that I got from Zazzle. I got a big old piece of a bunch of different ads and I still have a bunch of them and I really envisioned it being on that little drawer so I thought it'd be cool. So I wanted to put a lighter color for the background so it would pop really well and I put a bit of Pla Waverly plaster paint uh, on there and then dried it and then added some uh, Mod Podge so that my ad would stick and then I found one that I liked so I'm just cutting that down so that it will fit on my my little shelf or my little drawer and then once it dried a little bit I took a piece of sandpaper and just went in a downward motion around the edges to get the the overlap that I had on there off and that comes off nice and straight so I'm taking a little bit of black paint because I had the white paint or the plaster paint uh, sticking out and I didn't want that so I just took a little black paint and went over it and then sanded it back and also sanded the ad so that it looked a little more distressed and then once that was done I did take a little bit of my antique wax mixture and I went over the edges because you could see the the plaster paint and I wanted those to be dulled a little bit and also went over the ad so that it was antiqued even more and aged. Just poking with my scissors the little holes where the knobs would go and I'm going to take my Mod Podge and seal the top now that I have it the way I want and make sure that that uh, add decoupage paper stays down. Now I'm going, while that's drying, I'm just going to put my knobs back on. I did spray paint them black. And then I will put the ones in the drawer. They just screw on the front. One of them was broken when I first got it, and I just took, took it off the top where the hanger was. It was the one exactly like it. So this was a Goodwill find, this board. It is from Woodpile, which is a Hobby Lobby product. I got this for $2 at Goodwill, and it goes for $6.99 at Hobby Lobby, uh, if you pay full price. And it already had, is brand new, and it already had the uh, twine around the bottom. So I decided I wanted to use one of these springs that we found on property. We found an old truck seat or car seat, and uh, I saved a bunch of them and I want to use this one on this board today. So I have a paper towel holder or roll that's empty and I cut it down to the size that I wanted and grabbed some 
of my grain sack here and I'm going to um, cut it down so that it will cover up that roll. Taking some plaster paint and I'm just giving it a, it's not really a dry brush because the brush isn't dry, but it is uh, just a light coat of the white uh, or it's plaster paint so it's like an off-white paint. There was some spots there that I got a little bit thicker that I wanted, didn't want, and I just took a damp cloth and wiped it back. And then as I was doing it, I liked the look of it blending in a little bit, so I did that all over the board. Now I'm placing the spring on the board, and I'm finding on each side of the spring, uh, I'm going to screw in, or I'm going to drill two holes one on each side of the spring so that I can run a piece of twine through it like a loop and tie that spring onto the board. I'm doing it from the back so that when I tie it the knot is in the front so when it lays on the wall it doesn't stick out or cause it to sit funny on the wall. And I just run those two ends through and then I lay the spring down and tie that on to there with a double knot. Now once I'm done with that I go back to my paper towel roll and I start to hot glue the the burlap around my paper towel roll so that it's covered and then I cut it about put four little slits in it so that I can fold down the bottom and make it so the flowers or greenery that I put in there or whatever if you were to decide to do this doesn't fall at the bottom. So I just cut it and then folded it in and glued each flap. And then I don't think I showed you but I did glue the the cardboard uh, into the back of the spring so that it would stay and not slide around. Now I'm just taking some greenery and popping it in there and a little bit of Spanish moss and it is done. Let me know down in the comments which one you like the best, if there was one that you could choose. I love to read your comments and see what you have to say. So thank you for watching and have a great day.